Yes. Good morning, people. Can we hear this? Am I audible? Hello. People, am I audible? Okay, okay. Uh, Gaurav says I'm audible. I'll just uh, check it once again, boss. Yeah. Uh, sorry for yesterday because I slipped into the <clears throat> slideshow more that uh, I did not know that around the 18th minute we had lost point and uh, it was only after I spoke for another 20 to 20 minutes that uh, I realized and I came back and I realized that uh, I was not in touch with you all. Uh, as a consequence, I would request uh, regular students particularly to, uh, and, and those who have their mobile phones handy while uh, uh, they are attending the lecture, in the sense that they attend their lecture on uh, either a laptop or a desktop or any other mode, and they would have a spare mobile phone with them. And uh, in that case, just in case there is a loss of connection, please uh, let me know. Uh, you can call me on my number. What I have done from today, I've been keeping my mobile phone along with me so that uh, in case of any uh, problem that occurs uh, with regards to uh, disconnection, network issues, etc., we could, uh, you could get in contact with me immediately and I could rectify the correction uh, if possible in that particular day. Well, while this happened, uh, something again very strange, uh, uh, I don't know whether we should call it as a coincidence or uh, we, we should be calling it as uh, any other name as such. But yesterday was the fourth time, okay, that's totaling before and after uh, my element that uh, we tried to switch to understanding the structure of the atmosphere and uh, we could not. This was very surprising to me. Uh, it could be a coincidence, but uh, every time, in fact, yesterday, if you see, it was that time that I, that I was switching to uh, the structure of the atmosphere and uh, uh, we lost connection as, uh, as such. Anyway, that's the funny part of it. Uh, since students are joining, I would uh, start my PPT. And uh, with regards to the PPT, I would uh, also would like to make a few things, a uh, few observations, in the sense that, uh, uh, in, in fact, uh, okay, let's that, let's brush that aside. Yes, this is the uh, structure of the atmosphere. But uh, before I go into the details of uh, explaining the structure of the atmosphere, uh, I think your uh, results were declared yesterday, and there was a lot of confusion uh, about your results. As a consequence, uh, what I was thinking of is that. Uh, uh, now, many students, uh, they, they, they directly post on the group that, sir, I did not get this, I did not get that. My This is showing absent, that is showing so many marks. In the years I, year I was zero and that, etc. Now, remember that this is a WhatsApp group. You have changed your names, etc. You have emojis. And uh, directly writing to me as sir, I have not cleared, etc., would be a uh, uh, would be a puzzle for me because uh, more nearly 150 students, and even if a few of you all keep on writing, that, sir, what happened about this? What happened about that? Uh, it would be a very difficult thing. So I have measured out a way, and in that way, I would say that uh, we are going to start a message. Okay, a common message. The first student. Okay, he will write number one. Okay, after he has written number one, he will write his name. 
Okay. You write his, you write your name, then you will write your admission number. Then you will write your exam number. Okay. Haven't written your admission number, exam number. Now we come to your problem. We are to be very good. Write the detailed problem that uh, your your marks are this and that, etc. This is case number one. I I don't know whether anything else needs to be added. If uh, any wise student thinks that uh, something more needs to be added, of course you are welcome to add. Now, after having finished this, we will put in number two. And uh, then the second student uh, will write his name and his admission number and his exam number. Okay, having written all this, his problem. And we are going to make a list like that so that I can verify track it and then a report to the examination section as to what the issue of my students in my subject paper one is now yeah uh, something to add to this could be whether the problem is paper one or paper two if it is both you write both if it is paper one you write paper one if it is paper two, you write paper two. Finish your message in your issue. Okay. And then number two. Now it may so happen. Let me let me be very clear about a few things. It may so happen that two students are writing simultaneously and they write number three. Consequently, there would be two number threes. But of course, we know that depending on the speed, etc., the first student will get number three, and the second student will also get number three. Now, it is the duty of the second student to make his number four. So we have a list of problem students having problems. Yes, uh, anybody has questions? Or anybody's mic is on? Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, sir. Yeah. Actually, your screen is not visible. My screen is not visible. Okay. I will uh, uh, just try to check why it is not visible. Uh, it was not visible from the start. Yes, sir. Right from the start, it was not visible. Yes, sir. Oh my God! Okay, okay, okay. Sorry again. Uh, this this uh, ailment of mine has taken off a lot of uh, sharpness from my brains. I suppose it's being in the hospital for a month. I have uh, lost in a lot of smartness. I would rather say. Anyways, I should be. Yeah, that was very nice of you. I would have been speaking again and again today. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, the context is clear, right? The context at least is clear. What we are going to do about problems of students who have not gained, not seen their marks. What I was saying is we'll write a message, we'll start writing a message, a common message on our group. We'll write number one. You can see number one here. Okay, student number one. Oh. Just a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment. The presentation can be seen. Okay. I will just check where I am supposed to be going. You have to bear with me so I general shortcuts. Why does this keep coming? 
Okay, you're seeing the screen now. And the uh, so first student will write his name. Okay, full name, please. Full name. We'll write your admission number. We'll write your exam number. Okay. We'll write your date of exam. I'm adding this now on this route. Date of exam. We'll write your paper. Problem, problem paper, whether it is paper one or paper two or it is both, right? And then let me know your problem. You're seeing this, right? What I'm writing, you're seeing this on your screens. Hello, people, your screen. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes, please sir. keep responding because. I'm a bit hazy about all this now, and uh, it will take some time before I get back to regular means and methods. Then, after doing that, number two student, in the same message, you will copy this message, you will post it in your mess message sending box. Below that, you write number two, you will write your name. Okay, then you write your admission number. You'll write your examination number, you'll write your date of exam, whether it is paper one, whether it is paper two, whether it is both, and the problem. Then we'll come to number three student. Uh, and so on and so forth. And we'll have a compiled list of all these things. Students will take proper care that you are posting your name, etc in the proper message now it so happens i've seen this happening and that's why i would like to just remind you all of uh, what the common errors in this are that uh, two students uh, would write simultaneously and the second student also is writing number two and the third student is also writing number two in that case it is the duty of student number three to change his his her serial to number three then some students, the second common mistake, some students pick up some message somewhere and they pick it from wherever it is. In fact, what has happened is after that, okay, from number one, two, three, four, we have come to number 17.
people i'm back can you hear me yes sir yes sir oh, okay fine fine that was very quick and thank you very much devosh i just uh, Uh, set up these things once again. Yeah, this is not my hat. Yeah, there is something very airy about the structure of the atmosphere. This this batch. Every time I enter, the thing about the structure of the atmosphere, there's some strange thing happening. Anyway, so uh, as I said. that as far as climatic and weather parameters what they are etc are concerned uh, we will be doing it at a later point uh, first we need to look into what is the vertical structure of the atmosphere you see that uh, normally uh, in in your school books you may have seen that uh, this part is called as the homosphere and this part is called as the heterosphere okay. now there are various reasons and explanations we are not going to go into uh, why they are called that way we are actually going into the four layered one two three four four layered structure of the atmosphere now why what 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 forms the basis of this four layers you can see that this red line that runs across uh, you could call it as a w or you could call it as an m of course it is not absolutely symmetric but it resembles and a funny thing that i would like to mention about this is uh, when of course you all have your objectives now but when we used to have uh, subjective papers a couple of till the till a couple of years ago uh, students used to remember that it's a w or they used to remember that it's an m and they used to draw all these symmetric w's like this and an m somebody would draw like this etc and uh, we would get very funny answers about it but uh, and of course these uh, would be students who would not have attended lectures otherwise as such but then this w is very uh, very peculiar and we need to understand the curves in this w uh, to get the right idea of how the structure is adjusted okay now uh, as i said that normally we study about it till 80 kilometers but then there is one more layer beyond that and that is the thermosphere okay sphere obviously we all know sphere is a sphere normal sphere and because uh, the atmosphere is a gas and gases and liquids take the shape of uh, 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 any any container you put them into now uh we are not putting any of these into any container as such but here you could say that uh, the gravitational pull on all these spheres would uh, require them to pack against the shape of the earth and that's why because the earth is generally called as a sphere we would call the subsequent atmospheric layers also as uh, spheres we would start from near the surface uh if you remember we have done earlier also that 50% of the atmosphere lies within the first 5 kilometers and then as you go away from the surface uh it is going to be a a, a very very rarefied thing and that is why a very interesting thing goes uh, about explanation as far as the thermosphere is concerned if i forget please let me know i will explain it to you at that point also now you see that the diagram to the right of your screen shows what horizontal lines please remember that these are not absolute horizontal lines overall this is a sphere but even otherwise these will not be horizontal lines because i would like to draw your attention to this small diagram that is here you see that uh, it, it reads tropopause and uh, it reads pole and it reads equator okay Now what is tropopause? Okay, here is tropopause. The limit of the troposphere is tropopause. Now why I I brought your attention to uh, that small diagram is that if you see carefully, 
the thickness of the uh, respective layer is more near the equator and the thickness of the same thing near the poles is uh, uh, significantly less and that's why i said that uh, the horizontal line is more hypothetical rather than real as and you can see that these lines the tropical uh, tropopause the tropics is going to be lower areas okay, these areas so you will see that it is going to be thicker here so the tropopause is at around 17 kilometers the mid latitude tropopause will be somewhere here is somewhere around 10 kilometers and polar is much much less it's at around 9 so there is a lot of variety i would say we have taken uh, some some geographical indi uh, uh, independence or i would say liberty instead of independence i would say uh, we have taken some geographical liberty but we have to understand these minor things to be proper students of geography and subsequently climatology and atmosphere as such well. by the way this is going to be the only chapter wherein we are going to speak about the atmosphere the second chapter onwards we would be more related to this part rather than any other part of the uh, atmosphere and that's why i said that when it comes to climate climatic elements i would be referring to it later and uh, we'll go into the details of that uh, then we move ahead otherwise again some problems should happen and we would be uh, we would be uh, strangled at uh, this particular point uh, itself now uh, you'll see that the basis on which the structure of the atmosphere is uh, uh, i would say carved out or is studied is uh, is this w and what is this w this w is basically temperature okay you'll see that in each of the layers in each of the layers the Uh, the the arm of the W differs, and uh, basically studying the structure of the atmosphere is nothing but explaining this W uh, to ourselves. Uh, as I said, that uh, the layer is divided into four parts. Three of them would otherwise fall into what is called as homosphere because there is a complete mixture of various gases. The thermosphere because of the very high temperatures, you'll see that uh, you have these atomic forms of these various. gases and we will find them in layers and that's why that's a different issue completely and we are not going to do further details at the most so in all you have four layers to start with you have the troposphere then you have the stratosphere then you have the mesosphere and we have the thermosphere as far as the troposphere is concerned we will see just almost i will have to okay he he no uh enjoy himself barking for some time before he stops okay so uh from the earth away the what what is so special about this uh let me before uh, starting explaining this w uh explain to you something many students have done but uh, i would been repeated what's called as a lapse rate so this lapse rate in an application way was to you in your earlier days in geography classrooms that uh, hill stations have lower temperatures and uh, as you come near the mean sea level the temperatures would rise this happens basically because the atmosphere fortunately unfortunately you don't know but the atmosphere is not heated by the sun's rays yes some part of it is heated by the sun's rays but majority of the atmosphere when i say some part i'm referring to this part uh that's the ozone part but uh, let me tell you that some uh, except for some part majority of the atmosphere is not heated by the sun's rays though the major source of energy that heats up the atmosphere is the sun what is this strange thing we are going to do this when we go into the heat budget but right now let me tell you in the simplest way that the energy from the sun arrives to the surface of the earth and then it starts radiating from the surface of the earth and that is how actually 
the atmosphere gets heated it, it, and and that's why you it's it's you you'll come across words if you are going into the details of readings of the atmosphere you will come across words like atmospheric window and so on and so forth in the sense that uh, the atmosphere is open to incoming radiations but it's it, it blocks the outgoing radiations because uh, uh, you will understand this better because your science students what comes into the atmosphere from the sun directly are short wave radiations we want to go into the details of that don't worry short wave radiations and what the earth reflects because it is not a self heat producing body long wave radiations and that is how the atmosphere gets heated but uh, this heating is uh, very unique and this is explained to us in what is called as a lapsary the people i'm back can you hear me yes sir okay okay sorry for all these disturbances even i am very irritated with this but uh, it's how things are i will just uh, start it again and i will present it now onwards Uh, can you see my screen now, people? Yes, sir. Yeah. So we said that uh, why uh, the uh, atmosphere does not heat the uh, Earth's uh, from the sun's rays because it's short wave, but what goes from out from the Earth is long wave, and that's easier for the atmosphere to be trapped. And in fact, you'll see that the greenhouse is uh, basically an explanation to this. Let us come to that sometime later. we were explaining explaining to us the lapse rate the ground temperatures versus the temperatures at 10 de, uh, 10 kilometers the difference and you will uh, split it unit wise and that is going to give us the normal lapse rate which is supposed to be 6 sorry 6.5 degrees per kilometer so if we are going to if you are going to calculate this <coughs> drop in temperature mathematically i would say it's 6.5 degrees per kilometer we know this is not the right way to do it but we need to have some standard okay, for it okay then uh, in spite of having standards then uh, why why do we uh, why are we looking at others basically because these values are more important as i would as i said that geographically also geographically also <coughs> 
the lapse rates at the equator are going to be different the lapse rate at the mid latitudes are going to be different and lapse rate at the poles are going to be uh, different the shear thickness itself shows that uh, there is going definitely going to be a difference and <clears throat> you would have you literally have so many uh, types of lapse rate now in 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 points and positions where we are presently you are at your residence i am at my residence okay. had we been taking this lecture uh, offline in sp college you will see that uh, any classroom in sp college you will see that within a particular area the lapse rate would be different a classroom in a in the basement of some building would have a different lapse rate now of course the scale of the lapse rate there would be uh, within the classroom that's bottom of the uh, the flooring up to the ceiling of that particular classroom uh, you you will see that a very good uh, ventilated room would have a different lap lapse rate you see that uh, a room on 20th floor would have a different lapse rate so you see that because atmosphere is a gas and uh, gas is very dynamic the atmosphere the, the lapse rates are going to be different in the sense that the very point we are sitting the very point each of us me and you wherever you are sitting you'll see that the daily lapse rates also change that means early time if i take the temperatures at 500 and 1000 and 1500 and 20 uh, 2000 meters as such early morning these values are going to be different afternoon the values are going to be different evening these values are going to be different and of course night time these values are going to be different as such this is a very important thing that we have to remember that lapse rates are very very dynamic the 6.5 uh degree drop per kilometer is a theoretical value it's not an absolute value let me tell you having said this you we'll see that uh, it's it's not only within the day now these are diurnal lapse rate let me tell you what i was saying that morning evening afternoon night these are diurnal lapse rate you could have seasonal lapse rate okay again wherever we are sitting with the monsoons arriving the lapse rates will change for the next four months okay then in winter the lapse rate for the same place will again change and with the advent of summer uh, the lapse rates are again going to be uh, different the summer lap lapse rates are very interesting and important because they bring in a lot of instability and it is in the atmosphere and it is this instability which is required for uh, precipitation which we saw which kept on happening for a significant time all through the month of the all through the last month that's the month of may that's basically because of instability of the atmosphere what is this instability uh, let us leave it for some other day as such so what happens is uh, in the first layer which is called as the troposphere uh, this the the limit of the troposphere was identified somewhere in 1908 so you can just imagine how uh, recent atmospheric studies are and uh, i i'll be going to that as well but uh, having said that okay, you can see that the troposphere is uh, the first layer and it occupies uh, the first uh, as i said that uh, near the equator it would be as thick as 16 km uh, while towards the poles it could be as thin as 8 to uh, 8 to 10 km as, as depending upon the uh, uh, low temperatures and uh, uh, of course towards the equator uh, as far as the uh, higher temperatures are concerned as such uh, i don't know whether i have said this earlier also but then uh, uh, we we often say that the maximum amount of sun's light is received or sun's energy is received along the equator uh, however the highest temperatures are not seen along the equator on the other hand we we'll see that the lowest temperatures however are definitely measured around the uh, poles now if anybody could give me a reason as to why is it that the highest temperatures are uh, found not found along the equator in spite of the fact that the sun's heat the maximum amount of sun's heat uh, which is called as insolation incoming solar radiation is a short form of uh, incoming solar radiation it is the max at the equator i uh, will be doing this in detail it was just a uh, 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 a quiz question for you all. We come back to measuring 
the uh, structure of the atmosphere as okay, the tropo troposphere the name tropos is basically mixed uh, comes out of from the basic word mixture okay, you will see that a lot of mixture of uh, weather etc and climatic elements takes place within these uh, first 10 or uh, 16 kilometers varying according to the geographic location as such okay, you will not find so much of mixture beyond uh, 16 kilometers particularly as such there is a definite drop in temperature as you rise but this rise in this drop in temperature is arrested around 16 kilometers as it drops to around minus 60 degrees after which after which uh, it does not drop further in fact it stabilizes now the zone in which the zone in which it stabilizes is called as the pause okay you pause your media players for some time if you if you meet your friend etc so uh, it 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 stops for momentarily uh, from uh, from dropping further and in fact it takes a u turn and it starts to rise and uh, this rise is uh, basically the advent of a new layer of the atmosphere for us but before that let me tell you that majority majority of uh, what called as the weather phenomena 99.99% of the weather phenomena take place with atmosphere in fact many a times has been referred to by some scientists as 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 a theater of weather phenomena okay it keeps on changing very fast and in different parts it brings about a uh, significantly different aspects of uh, weather phenomena around from being very wet to being very dry so on and so forth. so that's the fantastic thing about uh,
Okay, can you hear me? People, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just set it up once again. I'm very sorry of all. I'll I'll come back. Let's come back again. I'll just check if I can shift to some other network. Fine. Okay. Are you audible now? Yes, sir. I'm audible now, people. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah i in fact have two internet connections but these days they are behaving very problem uh, let's not waste time calling them something i will uh, maybe we start with uh, where we had left okay so uh, as i said that the second layer uh, you have a zone where you have maximum concentration of ozone that doesn't mean that you don't have ozone above that that doesn't mean that you don't have ozone below that and in fact let me tell you that that doesn't certainly mean that there is no ozone in the troposphere the highest concentration is found in a particular area and that's why it is called as the area of maximum ozone or it is also called as uh, what has happened uh, I'm not able to erase these things. Oh, I think I've saved it otherwise. Anyway, so uh, that zone where you have the maximum oxygen, and uh, it is here. This is called the ozone layer. A very interesting thing about the ozone layer is around 70s. Some scientists said that this ozone layer was punctured, and this puncture was found above the Antarctic continent. And uh, in fact, if we did not pay heed to that. you would very soon have one more about the arctic uh, ocean also and that's why then came up what is called as the montreal montreal protocol uh, where in countries industrialized countries uh, came together and uh, they said that they would cut down on emissions of refrigeration gases now what is that to do with it okay? gases used in refrigeration industry that's your fridge and deep freezers etc use a gas called as freon and a series of other gases as such these gases do harm the ozone they split the molecular form of o3 that's ozone and uh, they they bring it to more stabilized form and uh, let me check if tomorrow i can get you this chemical reaction from youtube somewhere or if you find some some you could just post the link of it on our group also i've given you two tasks for the day so uh, uh it's 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 this this ozone that was uh, at a very difficult time between 1970 and 2000 uh, but it is believed that as scientists are saying that after 2006 because countries have uh, have shifted to other refrigeration technologies uh, the depletion of the ozone layer is significantly Uh, uh, decreased, and as a consequence, it is believed that uh, the uh, ozone hole is healing up, as uh, as as latest reports uh, say. Okay, as you can see, that a tropopause where the fall in the temperature gets arrested, uh, then there is a sharp rise, and then it walks through maximum ozone layer, and then after it has it has crossed the ozone layer. there is a gentle drop in this curve and uh, at a point that's around uh, 50 km uh, this increase in temperature is arrested and uh, there is again a u turn wherein the temperature starts falling once again and uh, this fall in temperature is experienced in the layer of the atmosphere called as the mesosphere this is one of again i would say this is the most important and one of all of them are important 
but in in sense, if you remember, we did the geological timescape, and uh, we spoke about uh, the the loss of the dinosaurs from the surface of this planet. And that happened basically because of a huge meteor that crashed on the surface. Let me tell you that it's not one, but there are at least a few hundred of meteors collapsing onto the crashing. I would say towards the surface. But before they crash onto the surface, they have to encounter this mesosphere. It is in this mesosphere that uh, uh, they, they, because of their friction, okay? remember they come from the thermosphere where the temperatures are very high, and mesosphere onwards, the density of the atmosphere starts increasing. So because of this, they are in friction with the mesosphere, and the mesosphere burns off 99% of the trash that comes onto the surface or comes into the atmosphere uh, from space as such. So that's the use of the mesosphere. Uh, and of course, there could be any some more uses. But uh, for, for our purpose, I would say this is the best use because you'll see that if all that trash used to be, it, it would have regularly fallen onto the surface of the Earth, it would have been very difficult for us to move around freely on the surface. So. Let us thank the mesosphere, which extends between uh, 50 and 80 kilometers. The temperatures do fall. The temperatures do fall regularly uh, from around zero degrees centigrade. That's uh, near the stratopause, where the strato stratosphere moves into the mesosphere. Uh, it falls to around minus 90 degrees. Now, let me tell you, mesopause. Mesopause is the that point or that zone, that area. We should not be calling it as a point because all these things happen in zones. They phase out and phase in. So uh, at mesopause, you could have the temperatures which are possibly the coldest of the temperatures in the atmosphere. The coldest temperatures of the atmosphere, let me tell you, will be found near the mesopause. Okay, that's the point wherein you would have the coldest temperatures. This point is where you would have the coldest temperatures and what, what would they be? They would be around um, minus 90 degrees uh, centigrade. We have covered up three of the four layers. Uh, the fourth layer, that's the thermosphere, uh, will be taken up uh, when we meet next time. Uh, that's all for today. And uh, I would uh, uh, stop here and then I would uh, Wait for any questions you have uh, for me. In a sense, uh, whatever you have done for the day, and of course the issues you could have as far as your first semester marks are concerned. So, uh, if you have any queries, you could just post these queries for me. Uh, you could just unmute yourself and you could speak to me about uh, uh, your queries as such. I'll wait for a couple of moments and. Uh, if uh, 